Hello everyone and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. In today's tutorial, I am gonna be showing you how to sublimate keychains. Now, I have done this tutorial previously. However, there have been updates to Cricut Design Space and there are a few updates that I like to share with you regarding this process. I'm gonna be showing you how to sublimate keychains using my big 15 by 15 heat press and by using my Cricut 9 by 9 easy press. At the end of this tutorial, if you find it helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. So without further ado, let's get started. The materials I'm gonna use in this project include my Cricut Explore Air 2, an easy press mat, sublimation blanks that I purchased from Amazon along with the hardware. All of this came in one package. A lint roller, heat resistant tape, jewelry pliers, a weeding tool, a ruler. I'm using my heat resistant gloves, butcher paper, a sub sublimation paper. I'm using my Cricut standard grip mat. My ink is I don't know if it's pronounced as hippo or hippo sublimation ink. This is the ink that I use. Make sure you can see that. And I am actually using two different heat presses. I'm going to use my 15 by 15 Starcraft clamshell heat press. I'm also going to use my 9 by 9 easy press. And the printer that I'm using is an Epson EcoTank 15,000. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go to my Google Photos account and I'm going to download the photos that I plan to use for this project. I'm going to use some photos from this folder. This is one of the recent folders that we have family photos in. And I'm just going to go and choose some photos that are horizontal and some that are um, vertical or you can look at it as you know some that are in portrait mode and some that are in landscape mode. For example, this photo right here, this is one of the wider photos. So I can use it just like this, or I can you know change it up to auto correct like that. Now I think that is a good auto correct. So I can just click done, and then I can download this photo to use in my project on one of the keychains. Um, and then I can just go through the rest of my photos and see if there are any others that I like that I want to use, you know, on the back of that keychain. Now I can just do the same photo twice, or maybe I could do this one on the other side of the keychain. I think I'll do that. So I can click that, the three lines to edit and I can just go to auto and let it auto correct. Or I can look at some of the other filters and see which ones I like the best but I kind of just think I like auto, but I, another filter that I like to use is one that's called Metro. And, you know, sometimes I like to use that one, but I think I'm just going to go with auto, click done, and then I'm going to download it. So I'm going to do that for all of the photos that I plan to use. Now let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm connected to my Cricut Explore Air 2. The first thing I'm going to do is to create two guides in order to use for these keychain blanks. The size of each blank is 2.4 by 1.6, but I'm going to make the guide a little bit bigger. So I'm going to grab a shape. I'm going to grab this rectangle right here, and I'm actually going to duplicate it. And I'm not going to change the size because this size will actually work just fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the first one um, horizontal. I'm going to change it to a guide just like that. And I want it to stay right where it is. Well, actually, I want it to be at the one and one axis. OK, so that'll keep it locked in place. And for this next one, I'm going to rotate it because some of my keychains the fold the images will be horizontal and some of them will be vertical so i'm going to rotate this one by 90 degrees right here in the top of my menu bar i'm going to rotate that by 90 degrees and i'm going to move that over to the one and no cancel that i'm going to move that over to the four and one 
axis okay and i am going to change that one to a guide also now keeping moving these over to this spot right here will keep them in place once i start at adding the images so i'm not looking all over the screen for them now what i'm going to do is bring the view down on my screen to um about 50% i'm hovering at the bottom left of my screen and i'm going to start to upload those images that you saw me downloading from google photos okay i'm only going to upload seven of them i'm going to upload this one this will be one side and then this will be the other side so that'll be one keychain i'm going to upload these two that'll be two keychains i'm going to upload these two that will be three keychains and i'm going to upload this one right here and I'm, this one will have the same image on the front and back so that will be three keychains four keychains we'll click add to canvas and give it a minute because this might take a while Okay, so my images are going to come in really big and they're going to come in layered and the size of my canvas actually changed back to 100%. That's okay. I'm going to bring the view back down to 25%. I'm going to move these images out just by clicking on them and I'll start to work with them one at a time. Now, what you'll notice is that my two guides are still at the same spot where they were. Now, what I want to do is start to work with this first image right here, and I want to move this over and I want it to stay in place. I don't want to keep looking all over the canvas for this image. So I want to click on the image and let me see if I have the option. OK, so I want to change the position of this image and I want the position of this image to be um, I want this to be at the four and five four and six is fine four and i'm going to delete all these other numbers four and six axis okay and it'll just stay there and what i know about this image is that i need it to be you know pretty much the same size as this guide and I'm not, I don't want to have to slice it out. I can just resize this, right, by changing the width. I'm going to change the width to right at 2.5. Okay, and when I change the width to 2.5, the height changed to 1.875. And that is still okay. Because remember, as long as it's going to fit, be a little bit bigger than my keychain blank, um, I should be in good good standing with it okay so that one is fine so i want to do the same thing with this one i need it to be a little in you know i can use this to just kind of go over it and make sure that it's good a good proportionate size and i think that's you know actually perfect so i'm going to put the guide back where it was where i wanted to just stay there and i want to do the same thing with this one. i'm going to change the width without changing the height i'm changing the width to 2.5 Okay, so I'm finished with these two images right here, and I kind of want them to just stay out of the way. So that's one keychain. So now here is another one. Now, this, instead of changing the width to 2.5, because this one is, you know, longer, it's taller than it is wide, instead of changing the width, I'm actually going to change the height. So let me see what happens if I change the height to 2.5 okay so that's perfect that did exactly what i wanted it to do which was change the width to 1.875 so that's going to be the front of one of my keychains and this will be the other side so i'm going to change the height to 2.5 and change the width so so far so good okay i'm gonna do the same thing with this now instead of changing the height i'm going to change the width because the width is the biggest you know proportion in this image so i'm going to change the width to 2.5 and this changed the height to 1.668 which is still adequate still good enough okay and then i'm going to do the same thing with this one i'm going to change the width to 2.5 okay that should be perfect 
So it's the same size as that image. So now I have three keychains. And then for the last one, I said that I would um, duplicate this one so that I have the same image on the front and the back. So, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and change it to the right size. And the right size in this case, the height would be 2.5 okay 2.5 and the width is 1.668 i am going to duplicate that okay and it looks like you know i really didn't even need those guides but if i wanted to like you know just go over each picture and make sure that you know they weren't too big and they you know fit nicely together i could do that but i'm i'm not going to do that all right and so now that i have all of my images the next thing I can do just to be on the safe side is I can create another template for my print then cut um, size. And now I've already created one, but I don't want to pull it up right now. I'm just going to go ahead and grab a shape and I'm going to grab this square right here. I'm going to resize it to um, 9.25 by I'm going to unlock it. 6.75 and i'm going to arrange this to send it to the back so it's behind those pictures i'm going to click arrange send to back and i want to make sure that all of my images are placed on here and that they are not touching so that once it's time to get them cut out i won't have any issues any problems they will cut just fine so i see this one is a little bit big like it looks like it'll it'll hang off so what i can do is just rotate it okay i can rotate this by 90 degrees and make sure that it fits on there just fine okay okay so now i'm finished with this rectangle i can actually turn it off just by clicking on this eye right here i can select over all of these images and i can attach them and then I can click make it. Okay. So now attaching them keeps them in the exact place that I want them to be in. And it won't allow Cricut Design Space to rearrange the images on the mat. So now what I'm going to do is make sure I'm connected to my printer. And I am going to get my images. Um, going to get this printed. So I'm going to click continue. And I'm going to send this to my printer. And the printer that I'm sending this to is my Epson EcoTank 15,000. And I keep the ad bleed on. You can turn it on, turn it off. You can do whatever works for you. I am going to choose Use System Dialog. And I'm going to click Print. And when my printer options come up, I am going to navigate to my sublimation preset that I already have saved. I have a two minute video that demonstrates my process for saving the sublimation preset. You can definitely refer to that video. I will make sure it's linked below. I want to click on the right printer, the Epson EcoTank 15,000. I want to click preferences. I am going to navigate to the sublimation preset, no mirror. I'm not mirroring these images because there are no words on here and I don't need to have them mirrored for this project. Okay, I am going to click print preview. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click print again. Then my printer option, so it'll show me what exactly what this is going to look like once it's printed. And I am going to load my paper in the paper tray and I'm going to click print. But I am going to do the loading of the paper in the paper tray on camera so you can see what that looks like um, on my end. The paper that I'm using is a sub sublimation paper. And in this printer, when I load the paper, I'm going to load it in this back tray and I load the paper face up. So the word a sub is facing the back of the wall. I have my images printed out. One thing you'll notice about sublimation is that when you print your images, initially the pictures are not vibrant at all. So if you look closely at these images, they're not very vibrant, but once they get some of that heat pressed onto them, 
they're going to be very vibrant so what i typically do with my sublimation print is that i let my images sit on my heat plate for a few minutes while i'm working on something else so i'm just going to move this over i'm going to let this piece of paper just sit here on my heat plate and the heat from the heat plate will be making sure that ink is dry so i do that all the time i never skip that step now one thing to note about these keychain blanks and most any keychain blanks you purchase there is a piece of plastic on here you can't see it you know with the naked eye so i just take my weeding tool and I'm just going to peel it back. So I'm going to take, you know, any weeding tool will work. Just going to peel back the plastic from both sides of the keychain blank. Now my image has been drying on this heat plate for about two to three minutes while I was removing the plastic from these blanks. According to the instructions that are on Amazon, because remember these are purchased from Amazon, it is suggested to let these rest or um, preheat for about five minutes. So I'm going to actually just put these on my heat plate and I am going to get this cut out with my Cricut machine. Now, if you're using a Cricut Easy Press, all you would need to do is just let the easy press just hover over the keychain blanks. And if you need me to show you what that looks like, I'll definitely will do that. But for the meantime, I am just going to move this and I'm just going to let these sit here for a few minutes while I get this cut out. It's important to note right here that I'm going to put my image on the mat. I should be putting my paper on the mat in the same exact direction that it was in in Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna put it face up with the images facing the same direction that they were facing in when I printed them out. And I am going to get this loaded into my Cricut. And for this, I have found the infusible ink sheets cut setting works perfect. My light is, my C is flashing. I'm gonna press that and let this cut out. Before unloading this sheet from my machine, before unloading the mat, I'm gonna double check that these cut all the way through because if I take this out of the machine before I double check that and it's not cut all the way through, I will waste a sheet of paper and ink and I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna just check by pulling this up and I can see that it cut all the way through so I can go ahead and get this unloaded. And I'm actually finished with my Cricut for now. And what I'm going to do is get my blanks from the heat press. And I am going to start to prepare them for pressing. So now I'm going to start to get these removed from the mat. And what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to press two keychains with my 15 by 15 clamshell heat press. I want to press two with my easy press so that you can see that this is doable from any, any size heat press. You know, as long as you can get up to the right temperature, you can get good pressure, um, even pressure, solid pressure. I definitely say go for it with, the, with an easy press. So I'm going to turn my mat over and just remove the images. one at a time. All right, so I have two blanks over here. They've been sitting on the heat press that whole time. And I am gonna still go over them with my lint roller, just, you know, just to remove any of those little blue fibers that are not visible to the naked eye. Have some butcher paper right here already ready. Okay, so I'm gonna put those right there and I'm gonna get my 
first image ready. I think I'll do this one first since this one is vertical. And what I'm doing is just making sure that it is a nice fit on the blank. So I'm just double checking it. Looks fantastic to me. And what I want to do is get this tape down. So I'm going to get some of my heat resistant tape. I use the Cricut brand. Um, it has just worked for me. Haven't had any problems with it. And I'm actually going to tape this down to the butcher paper. The purpose of taping it down to the butcher paper is to make sure you don't get what's called ghosting. And I'm going to secure it very well to the to the butcher paper. Now the recommended heat setting um, according to the blanks is 350 between 356 degrees and 395 degrees. So I kind of just went closer to the, the far end of that. And I decided on 385 degrees. That is what I have found works the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one pressed also, making sure that I'm paying attention to where the hole is. So the top of the image should be on the same, you know, on the same side or at the same place as where the hole is. So if I put the keychain hardware up here, but the picture is upside down, that looks weird. Unless you just like it like that. I mean, that's fine with me. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't, it won't bother me if you do that. That is totally your choice. Not how I want mine, but you do what works for you. All right, so we are ready to get our first side pressed. So I'm gonna take the butcher paper back over to the heat press. And what I'm going to do is take another piece of butcher paper to put on top of this. So this is gonna be kind of like a sandwich. Like this is the bottom, this butcher paper is the bottom bun. These two blanks are the meat. And then this is the top bun. So it'll be just like this on the heat press. Let's move back over to the heat press. Put my first layer with the a sub paper on top. That's what's on the top right here of the platen or the heat plate. And then I want to put my other butcher paper on top of that. This protects any ink from getting on my heat press. That's the purpose of the butcher paper. I'm going to close this. I have it on medium pressure, 385 degrees for 40 seconds. Okay, my timer went off. I'm gonna put my gloves on, both gloves, and I'm going to carefully, now I do feel like I can use this again. Definitely gonna use that again. I'm gonna carefully remove this. Beautiful. Look at this. Look at that. Look at how vibrant that is. Beautiful. Okay, so that's one side. So now I'm going to get the other one. This is the color release. So if you look at it, you know how much ink is left. Pretty much none, right? So that's a good color release. Oh, this is beautiful. This is vibrant. Look at that. Look at that. This will be my bottom piece so now i'm going to put this image on the other side of this blank still making sure that i'm you know at the top paying attention to where the top is paying attention to where the top is and i'm going to get this tape down to the other side of the keychain blank but i'm gonna you know gotta turn it over just wanted you to be able to see that okay that looks really, really good.
Okay, so now I have my first image again, and I'm gonna put this. So remember, look, this, let's see the color difference, what the heat does to the image, that heat, that heat is different. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna get this pressed down on top of the other side of the keychain. Okay, now I'm gonna get another piece of butcher paper and I'm gonna put it on top. Remember the sandwich, the bottom bun, the meat, and the top bun. I'm gonna press this. All right, I have my gloves. And let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm definitely going to use that again. Look at that. Look. Look at that. Now I just have to find the right color tassel. I'm thinking green. I think a green tassel will look nice with this, but we'll worry about that in a minute. We'll do the tassels all at the end. Okay, so let's look at the other one. See, Peter might try to keep my keychain, and I might have to do some damage. Okay, look at this. This is the other side. Look at that, and what am I gonna say? I love it. I love it. Okay, so now let's press the other two with our Cricut Easy Press. Now, it's important to note right here that in my house, at, at least, I don't know how, you know, what the, the electrical conditions are at your house. I cannot have two heat presses powered on and plugged up at the same time. So I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to go back to my other table and we'll start with the Cricut Easy Press. I am going to use my... Cricut 9x9 Easy Press, but instead of using 385 degrees, I'm, I have it set to heat up to 400 degrees and I'm going to press for 45 seconds. So typically when I'm using my heat press, I go with the standard settings. If I'm using my Easy Press, I do adjust it a little bit to increase the temperature and the time. So I have my blank, my first one. I'm gonna go over it with my lint roller on both sides, I've already moved, removed the plastic. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Both sides. And this is my first image. You can see how bright it is, or you know, just the color is not vibrant just yet. So now I'm just gonna put the keychain blank on top and make sure that you know it's covering all the faces. Nobody's face is like halfway cut off or anything like that. And then I'm going to tape this. Do the same thing with this one. And making sure that I'm paying attention to where the hole is so that the keep the blank is right side up and the image is also right side up. So just like that. Just like that. All right, so I am gonna use an easy press mat just to make sure I have even pressure. That's one thing I worry about when I'm using my easy press. And I'm gonna just put an extra piece of butcher paper under here just to kind of double layer it. And I'm gonna put one piece of paper on top. So it's the hamburger method again. Bottom bun, this is the meat, and this is the top bun, okay? And I'm gonna give this a lot of pressure. I'm gonna give this a lot of pressure for 45 seconds. Okay, so that was 400 degrees. 45 seconds, and trust me when I say I was giving this a lot of pressure. So this is a good sign. Typically, if you can see the image, so let me pick it up so you can see it. If you can see the image on top of the paper, like you can see the pictures, that's typically a good sign. So hopefully it worked. Let me put on my gloves. 
And we shall see if the Cricut Easy Press did what it was supposed to do. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Look, Cricut Easy Press, I would kiss you, but I don't want to. Look at that. Yes. It did a good job. You do good job. Look at Now look, I'm quite impressed with the Easy Press. So if you're wondering, you know, will an Easy Press do the trick? The answer is yes. You just have to give it good pressure. Okay, I'm still gonna use this same paper. Again, I'm just gonna use it in a different area. So I'm gonna get these turned over and I'm gonna add the picture to the other side, being careful because these blanks are still hot. All right, so I'm gonna add my butcher paper back on top and I wanna give this good, good, good pressure for 45 seconds, 400 degrees. All right, I'm gonna put my gloves back on. That was 45 seconds. I'm gonna turn this off because I don't need it anymore. It's the only project I'm doing tonight. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. Oh, I don't know what that okay. Let's see. Look at that. Look at that. Does someone have a new favorite keychain? Yes. Is that someone me? Yes. Look at that. <laughs> I have to tell y'all what happened right here, but I'm going to tell you at the end. I'm not going to tell you right now. You might have already seen it, but I'm going to tell you at the end. I will tell you at the end, unless you see it already, drop me a comment below and let me know if you see what I did right here or what I didn't do and what I should have done. All right, so now we are going to get the castles put on the and the hardware. All of that will definitely be done in a time lapse. We're gonna just, when I say we, Morgan is behind the camera, you can't see her. <laughs> Those are her hand. That's her hand. But she's going to look through here and decide which four tassels we're going to use. And then she's going to put those together for me on the keychain. Okay, so this is the finished product. And you know what I'm gonna say? What am I gonna say? I love it. I love all of these, even the ones that have a mistake. Maybe you've caught the mistake already. So this is one that is uh, my me and my daughters. And it's just different on the front and back. This one is the same on the front and back. It's just Peter and the girls. And this one is different on the front and back. It's uh, Peter and I from our anniversary trip to Costa Rica last week. Now this one, I made a little mistake and I don't know if you caught it already, but let me tell you what the mistake was. Now I did not mirror any of these images and because these have words on it and numbers, I needed to mirror this. So if, I don't know if it looks backwards on your end, but on my end, it is backwards. It looks like it's uh, 7102 on the back of our shirts. And then the words um, are also backwards because I did not mirror this. Now, the rest of these images didn't need to be mirrored because they didn't have any words or numbers or anything like that. But if you are using a design that has any words or numbers, you will definitely need to mirror. So that doesn't take away from how I feel about this keychain. I still love it. I think it came out beautiful. The colors are vibrant and I'm so in love with how they turned out. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and Thanks for watching. Bye.